All right, all right. Welcome back to the Oni Podcast, where we basically interview all the members of the Oni team. Today, we've got Carson Waterworth on. He's a massage therapist, or a manual therapist, I should say. We'll talk about that soon. But before we get into that, why Marie? What's our Marie word of the week? So... It, it is breathe. So breathing is breathe. something I struggle with. <laughs> yeah. Um, and well, you'd so be surprised, actually. A lot of people don't know how to breathe properly. So what's the Māori word for breathe? Whakanga. Whakanga. <laughs> yeah. Whakanga. Whakanga. Yeah. All right. So welcome, Carsten, to the only podcast. Kia ora, kia ora. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't say um, whakanga... Fakanga. Fakanga. Instead of the word breathe, we've got to donate a dollar to Waimarie's lunch. Great. We've already <laughs> racked up like over twenty dollars over mm-hmm. the uh, course of these podcasts. So. And it's only twelve dollars steak up at the hotel restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't let me down, man. <laughs> That's almost worth it just to bust out the word. Uh, what is it? What are we I not supposed to say? I'll breathe. Breathe. Nah. <laughs> nah, no, no way. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> I appreciate it. You that. owe me. I owe you a dollar. Okay, he can give you my dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I want to hear all about your live casting because you've been around the block. Mm-hmm. You've also got a very interesting accent. Yes. We're going to delve yeah. into that because uh, if you haven't heard my voice before, it is a little bit weird. <laughs> In a good way, though. In, in a positive way. It's different. Yeah. It's an interesting flavor of... We've got a combination there. So, do you want me to just jump in? Yeah. yeah. Where are you from? Where am I from? So, I was born in Germany. Germany. But with, parent, with the parents of English descent. So, I was in Germany for four years, and then I grew up in northwest England for seven. And I came over to New Zealand when I was 12. Right. I was here for 10 years. I went and traveled. I was working on cruise ships. So, I was mainly communicating with my Americans out there so quite often when I say my mm. name it's not Carsten but Carsten Carsten that's where that twang comes and from and that's where okay. people are like where is this fella from <laughs> it's a bit of a mishmash in there so, uh, yeah. yeah it is a bit of a mishmash yeah. This, this blah, blah, blah. yeah so yeah. I just got back in the country uh, about two years ago now mm. I came back on holiday to visit my parents and I was like Wellington's great I'm gonna live there <laughs> <laughs> and here were I you am. in Wellington when you were 12? No, I used to live up in uh, up on the coast, Paraparuma. Ah, nice. Coast okay. Kid. Yeah. All right. So, you said something about cruise ships. Yes. What, so, what was that about? Right. So after I did some work in gyms uh, for a year, and then I was gonna, I got a phone call because I applied for a job at a cruise ship as a personal trainer. Ah. So I was working on. Why work? personal training? Uh, it was fun at the time. Like, I was really into exercise myself. So it's, yeah. like, it's an easy step from there to mm. telling people how they can work and move a little bit better themselves. Yeah. Um, and personal training, I enjoyed the actual, what I thought the work was going to be on the cruise ship, which was, you're the fun guy. I mean, you're on a cruise ship. No one's really there to work out <laughs> initially. So you've got to make it as exciting as possible. Yeah. Uh, the first cruise ship I was on, there was actually a boxing ring in there and mm. they just broke it to me on the day they're like so you're also going to be running the boxing classes too oh. <laughs> by then had you had any like zero, zero to, they handed me an A4 piece of paper which told me there was like how old were you when you did this cruise ship thing 22 22 22 and how old are you now 28 28 yeah so I've been around the block since then I was only there for one season and actually quit because we'll, we'll get around to that later yeah okay frustrated yeah it was the so they gave me an A4 piece of paper. Never done any boxing in my life. And then they're like, okay, so tomorrow you're going to be taking them through these classes. Yoga instructor now. Yep. And the yoga instructor and the spin class oh. instructor and the nutrition. Did you know any yoga? I did know a bit. Okay. What's knew- spin class? Spin class. Yeah. Basically it's, it's basically, it's a stationary bike and I bark at you to pedal faster. <laughs> <laughs> Up those cool. legs, team. Yeah, it was Pick them up. <laughs> actually a fantastic detox as well. Every morning, you'd know it had been the spin class from the night after because the room would always stink of Jack oh, Daniels. God. <laughs> 7 a.m. and oh, there's just bad. everyone sweating out the night before. <laughs> it was great. Oh, I was I encouraging them to fakanga. There's your word. There we go. Yes. Fakanga-ing. Uh, <laughs> 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 I had to phrase that. 
Yeah. Um, so the cruise ship, I joined up because I was pretty motivated at the time. I wanted to help people. Mm. And it was quite disillusioning because the majority of my expectations, they expected me to sell uh, a lot of detox products. And I'm using air quotes on this detox right. products. What were and these products? There's proprietary blends of seaweeds and herbs and things like that. Uh. And most of our conversation, because I would run seminars on the cruise ship, which is right. why I sound so American, is because I had to really, really translate my language for the Americans. I've been saying it right mm. now. Um, and I just could not get behind it at all. And we're expected to sell thousands what of dollars. What are these products supposed to do for people? Like, well, you know, they're like, if you're fat, this is the missing ingredient. Oh, it's, it's the, ma oh my it's the God. magic bullet. We've explored uh, oh my exercise God. and nutrition. What you're missing is the detox. You're this. missing this vital seaweed kelp thing. <laughs> yeah, so an absolute oh pseudoscience. And we yeah. hook them up to these machines to measure just how much detox products they need to so it's oh my god no like water resistance kind of thing yeah. and even if they measured fine if they were healthy they were like well we still recommend a six months because everyone needs this there's toxins everywhere people oh my god the t-word toxins yeah. <laughs> toxins 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 we'll there's, talk about that soon as well because you're in the massage now as well and people mm -hmm. throw that word around yes. too oh, metabolic toxins. waste is the oh yes yes <laughs> it's the friendlier um, term is uh interesting because we just had our nutrition podcast oh, or a Tayoranga hey. uh, podcast from last week with Grace Humphreys, who's mm -hmm. our only nutrition coach. Um, and yeah, we, we, we were having a little rant about other um, little pseudo hey. uh, sciencey short term fixes to, to, to health. And it's, uh, it's not good, man. It's um, totally unethical, I think. It is. So they were trying to get you to sell this stuff. So I think their mindset is that these people have lots of money. We might as well be the ones taking it, right? That's that's fair enough. When I was oh, crossed God. my arms, I was like, no, I, <laughs> I know it's not. Uh, it's not the way to run mm. run things. You know, even if you are just seeing these people for a week and you won't see them again because yeah. it's just on the crew, it's just not right. Um, so what happened then? You said no. I. I I crossed my arms and I was very resistant and they actually mm. ended up putting me on a different cruise ship because <laughs> initially I was on quite a nice ship and they're like, well, you, you don't deserve it. You're, you're hemorrhaging as money, man. You're supposed to be bringing in the bid bucks. They put me in a smaller one. Eventually, it got to Christmas time. Um, and I just threw in the towel. I was like, this is not for me. Yeah. I'm not making the impact that I want to. This mm. is not the way that I'm going to run things. Yeah, I don't imagine you would have stayed there because I haven't known you for long, but you know, you, you judge your character pretty quickly and it's like, aha. Integrity comes yes, to mind. I think. Exactly. If you know it's not right, then you can't. You're just robbing people at the end of the day. So. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that was the end of my cruise ship life. It was mm. good fun, but that's that. And I went on to London from there. Yep. Uh, back in the day, I used to have aspirate. I did a bit of parkour. Parkour! 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 parkour. Um, can't do a flip still. <laughs> what's, um, what's parkour all about for our listeners that may not know what it is? Parkour, there's, there was a group um, in France, actually, and it's all about art duplacement, which is mm. getting from A to B in an efficient manner. And along the way, it sort of split into different groups as well. What you call free running, people like to add in a little bit of flair getting from A to yeah. B. You know, little tricks the, here and there, yeah, like little doing flips the, doing and the and that. But yeah, parkour is essentially, it's like martial art for movement of getting from A to B. So we really drill in how to maneuver over obstacles, learning to jump from heights and roll. Like and vault over things and things like vault that. Vault is the perfect word, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <nailed it>. okay. <laughs> Um, so I was quite into like, using my body and whatever mm. could get me the most freedom possible to yep. get out of it. So I was PTing in London for a bit and I, um, I was training at the local parkour gym. And this is when um, things hit the fan. Uh, All right. So I was actually a month into my training at the parkour gym. I was on my longboard on my way to the last day of my job. I mm. to start a new job. I'm on the zebra crossing. And the man was on his mobile phone, and he did oh not my. stop, and it just kept going through me. So in a car. In a car. Yes. Whoa. Okay. So car versus skateboard. The um. Mm. The scare. The yeah. skateboard one. No. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. I haven't heard this before. Damn. I've yeah. only seen this in like a briefly in your bio on the website. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I was buggered, well and truly. Yeah. Um, and I was a little bit out of my depth while I was in London as well. So I was. <laughs> Living in a little shed in a illegal yeah, part yeah. in East London, 
and so it couldn't work and I was a little bit injured then and uh, a little bit a little bit yeah did they have any processes to like help with things like that they like did you? straight off the bat I was on the internet I was like oh, how can I get some insurance and get some money and it didn't come through for a solid year wow like the actual money for the case we started physio I think quite a few months in that mm. process took a while what happened to the guy that like ran you over he was pretty shaken up himself yeah. actually he did not see me coming Good. obviously you'd hope but he was on his phone and he's profusely apologizing he actually picked me up and dropped me off at the hospital um, never saw him again he should have paid for everything yeah I know I'm not going to hold it against him mm. cool. it happens but yeah so that altered things a lot um, a lot of the freedom that I enjoyed in my body yeah a lot of the training you know things that you'd take for granted yeah like, um, like my shoulder worked differently from then on mm. like if I hung from things it would have a searing pain and things would go clunk and I was like this yeah. isn't right um, the physio I'd never felt uh, well, we didn't really connect the insurance right. company gave her gave me to her and she gave me an A4 sheet of paper again and do these exercises and mm. we'll just rub this in there so they really didn't care uh, I didn't care enough no. I'm sure yeah. she cared but you see a dime a dozen it wasn't yeah, heart was not in it, and my body was not fixed, and it was never 100% from mm. that point till recently. Um, yeah, which is why I'm back in the the business of working with bodies again. Is back in the movement game. You know? Exactly. Um, that's I've, a, that's a, uh, uh, sadly that's a that's a common story. Yeah, not just from physio, yeah. but even other trainers, other massage therapists, other health professionals that might not take the time to build rapport with you, um, and create a treatment plan with you it's always yeah. It, it, yeah. not always but you know it can be the case of like here's an H4 sheet of paper do X and you're, you're left there going it why is, what the hell yeah, it is easy to fall into that paint by numbers thing mm. where it's like oh, it's got to be this take this piece of paper rather than actually I don't feel she didn't know enough in terms of oh, switching on Maseratis or anything like that it was mm. uh, suffered for it for a little bit longer than I needed mm. to so. so how long was that whole process of rehab um, I'd say it's really kicked into gear Sorry, in this last couple of years now that I've been doing some self-research yeah. and what's been sticking mm. um, and rehabbing myself. Mm. So things are starting to come right and I'm starting to switch on muscles that I didn't know weren't switching on. Mm. More proprioception, more awareness of where it should be. Right. Um, and even getting massage myself has helped with that. Mm. I think massage tells you a lot yeah. I like to think it's like uh, having a conversation with your body in a way mm. and then I'll push on these places and you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> what is that <laughs> that felt like that <laughs> no way I didn't even know I had mm. one of those <laughs> mm. I think it's a super valuable tool in that way yeah um, for sure and that's why I'm more than happy coming from a personal training background I really appreciate just how much you can mm. learn about yourself from other people poking yeah. in there and moving things that's, for you. That's a similar journey to me and that I went from personal training to massage and then explored from there. Yeah. Why massage therapy? Like, What was the thought process from there? I actually did a certificate course when I was 19, straight out of college. Right. Um, someone was like, you'd be good at massage. And they were right, in fairness. So I mm. picked it up pretty quickly and anatomy and physiology is my jam. So I was like, yeah, this is great. Um, and then I went to work on Rupeo and never touched massage again. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> That's right. You worked at a ski, uh, ski field. Ski? Yeah, yeah. I was one of the uh, lift attendants there. Mm. Um, and I, and I, coming back into the country, I was like, you know, it's got to be, got to be in the realm of bodies again. So I was yeah. like, massage is the way for me. I really enjoy having my hands on, moving bodies around, getting to, mm. getting, helping other people get to know their bodies is kind of what drives me. So awesome, I'm really man. in touch with my own, and that comes back to Fakanga because it's all about that awareness. Mm. Um, breathing in particular, a lot of people that are on my table, I will tell them this a lot. Did I just say the word? Is that a dollar? I think it's, I think it's good in context because we don't know the, um, yeah, we don't know the verb version of Fakanga. You can use that. Yeah, yeah. 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 very true. Um, it worked. Yeah. And getting people to connect to their body again, mm. Fakanga is so important. Mm. Um, whether it's through injury or stress, um, a lot of the time, just getting them to fakanga yeah. through a lot of things helps. Nice. Yeah. Um, so fakanga is actually, it has um, a few meanings behind it. So there's take two, take a breath, inhale, catch breath, rest, 
refresh and relax. Mm. Relax. That's a good one. I like all, all of those, those, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're telling everyone to relax yeah. at the table. To fucking uh, on the good. table. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. Especially um, when someone is feeling a pain, and again, I'm using air quotes on pain, when they're feeling those sensations, it's easy to avoid it, but I want to stay in there and breathe and work with it mm. and work through it. So that's very important, especially if it's been, if there's been, how to say, if there's been issues for a while, mm. most people will start building up habits to avoid going through that experience. Oh, yeah, man, that's that's pain to a T and how it affects movement and, and yeah. everything else. Yeah. We see it all the time with injury rehab and, and just chronic pain's a big one or mm -hmm. any sort of pain in general. Your body's going to move around it instinctively. Absolutely. So you start developing these patterns to move around your pain mm -hmm. and there's always compensations for that. You always see consequences of that down the line. If not today, man, those steps add up. That Those patterns add up in the long term. So it's very hard to disrupt when you do it early. Totally. But um, back to you, you're talking about why massage, movement, you know, you've been talking about where you've been and what you've been interested in, and it's all to do with movement. And yeah. when I met you, um, trying to scope you out for, for <laughs> expanding my team, obviously, that's what I'm, one of the interests I'm looking for you to have. And man, you were living and breathing it, or fucking uh, um, <laughs> it, man. So nice. it was a natural decision for me is that yeah okay here's this super driven guy who knows who he is mm -hmm. isn't about to stand for anything else uh, that he doesn't believe in yeah. and that was powerful for me to know because i don't want somebody of zero integrity i want someone to know who they are and what they stand for and that was you man totally. so i'm very happy with my decision and yeah so you came back to new zealand mm -hmm. decided to get back into some sort of movement practice mm -hmm. you chose massage yeah then Massage is a as a career. That's so it. this is how I want to develop my skills and bodily awareness is uh, working on others with my hands, helping them mm. understand what's going on with their bodies, where their pain and discomfort and their and being able to open up and get people. I find there's there's two kinds of people: there's people that uh, have been injured, and they know what it's like to lose that sensation, not being able to move, and being frustrated. I like working with them and letting them know that hey, there is hope. You don't have to yeah. be in that state. Come in, and we'll help you. Um, and there's also the people that are just enjoying doing what they're doing right now. And mm. You can always help them do that, but better, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> pain-free, and keep them doing it. I mm. think is the key. It's so. kind of hard to convince them sometimes, though. Some of these people that have not felt that pain before, they've Without never been that low. Yeah. And this is this is where my background as someone that has been injured and frustrated comes into that it's like yep. you don't know what you've got until it's gone and especially yeah, with movement sure. it is use it or lose it exactly <laughs> and uh in terms of bulletproofing yourself you want longevity you know it's not a sprint with the body i'm mm. um, going back to cruise ships um in the first one there would always be guaranteed every week someone with a scar down their knee they were an athlete they pushed and pushed and hit the wall in their 30s and just had to get surgery and things like that oh, and man. you have to think about at the end of the day Will you be able to use your body in your 50s? Yeah. Is, is practice conducive yeah, to man. that? It will happen at some stage. Yep. Um, and so you have to gear your thinking not to the sprint, but to the marathon and how you can keep having a practice that you can develop yeah. in the long term too. Exactly. I want to do what I enjoy or love forever. Yes. You know, <laughs> I love doing it. Without I want to keep doing it. Yeah. I want to be one of those like 80 year olds that can still do like muscle ups and oh. like walk around the beach like yeah I'm 80. I want to put still the 20 year olds to shame. Yes, <laughs> yeah. look at this old guy. What's your excuse? My uncle just turned 70 something. Congratulations. And, yeah. And um and he's still hard out at the gym like he posts nice. up his gym videos every morning like people do whatever and he's like doing like 50 push ups like yeah. nice. the all of these like random things and I'm just like looking at him and I'm like I want to be you but also I'm yeah. lazy but <laughs> no, well, that guy's an inspiration man cause it's like so many people are like oh um, I'm too old and it's like no man you, you can do this yeah. you just gotta keep doing it but you need <laughs> some, yeah you need a plan in place though you yeah. can't get from it no one's gonna get up everest by accident yeah, exactly. no one's gonna find themselves on the top of there without planning the route a bit better yeah. first yeah. That's, that's like my name she's also she's 83 mm -hmm. she's still she does like mm. 
iron chromata. Do you guys know what that is? No, what is that? Well, the so, word iron makes me sound like this. Is something impressive. <laughs> something impressive. Um, it's like a triathlon for old people. It's not that like iron Maori. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Yeah. So oh, they, they have iron Maori for like the in between gap between old and young. <laughs> I don't want to say it like old. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they have iron Maori, iron tamariki, and iron mm. kaimata. Nice. So they have all the three but yep. like kids. Yep. Yeah. My nan's done Iron Māori every year for six years. Mm, nice. And they give exactly. they have trophies at the end of it. Like yeah. she doesn't really like bike riding, so she just does an extra hundred meter walk or something. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> it's really important to note. It's not like she all of a sudden woke up and started to be that active all of a sudden. She yeah. has she been that out. active for a long yes. time. She's maintained <laughs> it. And she's still working. She's looking yeah. after people that are younger than her, like, in, oh, in yeah. a home. For sure. Yeah, and it's amazing. She's, like, my biggest inspiration. She's mm. my nanny, you know? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Nannies are cool. <laughs> Very important for old people. Well, older, I don't want to say just you old people. I'm going to say <laughs> people in general, as you get older, to maintain your movement, maintain your strength, because it loses itself quick the older you get. You'll deteriorate quick. I'm seeing that in my granddad at the moment. I forget how old he actually is, but he's in his 80s, and um, uh, somebody gave him a walking stick and basically kind of told him he had to use it. And ever since he started using the walking stick, he's gotten slower, mm. steps smaller. His size, you know, he's shrinking faster than I think he would have if he did. You have to stoop over stick. a little bit to put all your weight on a stick as well, don't you? Yeah. It's so he's building these kind of compensations and patterns that he wouldn't normally use and certain muscle groups aren't being used as much as they would his bones aren't being stressed as much and he is not doing good I don't mm. think it's quite sad to see so I don't want to see much more of that I want people to keep what they have keep doing it properly too we keep talking about movement but movement you don't just move you got to move uh, well as well it is going to be interesting sort of our generation when it gets to that stage as well because there's a whole lot of different factors yes. that they did not encounter at their age yes um the, the dreaded desk jobs yeah and sitting down and even uh phones and things like that in terms yeah. of how we use our thumbs you'll see five-year-olds trying to uh flip a book by you know running their hands over it. i'm wondering where the pages weren't turned you know have you guys seen that um somebody did an illustration um of where they thought humans were going to like evolve towards like uh, body shapes and stuff like that They'd, like I think a little wally hit it pretty spot on wally yeah that was pretty good but this picture man it was so grotesque they had these like they had like no hips they had no legs pretty much they was all sh it was all shrunken because we never use our legs anymore like yeah. we just sat so our bodies have adapted to this new environment like they have these like elongated long uh limbs and uh, arms i'm speaking about and like fingers with like these these like like alien like fingertips they can <laughs> you know touch the keyboard really effectively and they've got like no shoulder muscles no arms and there's just the weird shaped head and you know squinty eyes and stuff like that can't talk because i'm asian but you know like even more even more alien like than than anything before but it was a really um effective illustration i thought in in uh highlighting where we are likely to go if we don't change our lifestyle behaviors something like a t-rex I imagine. yeah yeah with like long fingers t-rex yeah. with long fingers it's disgusting that's mm. pleasant that's yes on that uh, on that <laughs> note <right> topic <laughs> on that note um is there Come see us, anything don't be a t-rex <laughs> <laughs> on that note you've got to leave soon but is there any um a last thought that you want to leave with us any tips for life or anything like that because you've been around the block you've had some decisions you're a man of integrity is there yeah. any tips you want to give our listeners yeah um any movement is good therapy basically mm. any movement is good therapy any movement. um if you can do it better great if you can have variety as well not get too stuck in doing one thing forever switch things yeah. up uh and coming back to that word <laughs> requested Fakanga. Fakanga, yes always doing that that'll 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 fit you for yeah. life i think if you can keep yeah learn how to breathe learn how to fakanga because if you don't you'll die <laughs> <laughs> and move i think that's a really really good tip um, um where can people find you uh oh sorry you owe me a dollar 
you said the word <coughs> before you said fucking ass. Yes, Which word? Yes, I said breathe before I said what word? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two dollars. <laughs> but anyway, before you leave, where can anyway. we find you at Custom? Yes, you can find me at Oni Gym. I'm currently there. Uh, Monday to Friday, uh, Monday to Thursday, 10 till 7, Friday, 10 till 4. Get in quick. They are filling up. <laughs> yeah, they actually are. We've uh, got Christmas coming up, so everyone's <laughs> buying gifts and massages, one of these things, you know. Um, www.oni.co.nz. If you want to find Carsten specifically, just slash Carsten, C A R S T E N. I'll be Puff, happy to huh? see you guys as well. It's yeah, <laughs> come in for a visit, see Carsten, learn how to fuck hang out, learn how to move your body, appreciate your body in new and cool ways. Mm. You know, your body will thank you later. Love it. All right. Goodbye, Carsten. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> thank you for coming. <laughs>